and welcome back. This is episode two of Hammer Time. I'm Jay Senton, and joining me... I'm Tyler Rogers. Uh, I'm a junior, going to be a senior at New Mexico Highlands. I play men's basketball here, and it's my second year here. I'm Jay Lamont. Um Yeah, I'm going to be a sophomore. Well, I got two years left. I'm about to graduate. So. Damn. Yeah. So, you guys, know, you guys have seen Jalen and Tyler before. If you've seen the YouTube channel, you've definitely seen... Jalen and Tyler, they're the first athletes I collabed with on the YouTube. Quick little sweep that day for me. Yeah, I know. We actually watched that video back before we came here. Did so, you? Yeah. That video. Yeah. That was a good video. It was a great, was a great first start. It yeah. was. The Glad video, we started this. There's a, there's a lot of – I've been getting a lot more views lately, mm-hmm. so I'm hoping to promote that one again, get yeah. some more yeah. views for that one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was a good promo. Just let me know. I, I gave you an extra view just – you know, 15 minutes ago. Yeah, heck yeah, that works. 15 minutes of your you time, know? great video. They add up. It is. They stack up. Definitely is. All right, so let's just get right into it, guys. I'm actually going to ask you about the recruiting process out of high school first, and then obviously we'll talk mm-hmm. for you, Juco. Yes, sir. But out of high school, what was the recruiting process like? Uh, you want me to take this? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so out of high school, I really only had Dominguez. You know, a lot of people get the, you know, like you can come to UNM for the walk-on. I had that option, but really just New Mexico Highlands. Uh, we uh, can speak on how hard it is to recruit in here in New Mexico. It's, it's very, uh, there's not a lot of exposure. Yeah, you can't. Within the it's hard to leave area. the state of New Mexico. So I had the Highlands, the Westerns, you know, Adam State looked at me. But Northern, that, of course. Yeah, Northern always is going to recruit everybody. But besides that, nothing really outside of New Mexico. So then you obviously ended up at JUCO. How did that work out? Uh, I love Juco. I mean, it was exactly what I needed coming off an ACL tear right before that, the year before that. Um, so I got to be able to get re like relearn how to play basketball is how I like to say. Because like, you relearn every step. You have to relearn how you move. But I got to play Juco, you know, and then obviously Dominguez uh, and I connected again. And then I ended up back over here. Jalen, for you, what was the recruiting process like for you out of high school? Um, out of high school is very similar to Rogers. Um just because, you know, we played in the same area, the you know, metro area of Albuquerque. Um, so, you know, I had some – I had some, I gained interest in Texas from Lubbock Christian. I was talking to them, went on a visit over there. Um, but they just weren't offering, like, a, you know, a full ride that I kind of wanted. So um, I came over here because Highlands was offering the full ride. And, um, you know, I didn't have to go to, like, Chapel for, like, a Christian university or something mm-hmm. like that. Like, I could really enjoy like being a college student. One thing that was big for me too was the the dorm situation. Mm-hmm. Um, I like being able to have my own room, like my own little space. Yeah. So I mean, all that went into it as well, and being close to my family. So, I mean, Highlands was honestly uh, it wasn't really a difficult decision to make. Um, like you know, I thought about it for a while, um, but it just seemed like the best kind of avenue for me. Um, you know, athletically and educationally. Now you two knew each other. Prior to coming here, because you guys played against each other, correct? We did, yeah. Played a lot against each other. What, probably, it's probably like three seven years. games total yeah. through three years. Seven, seven official high school games for with sure. like practice and everything. Yeah, because and... we were on the same travel team as well. We both played for D One Nation. Yeah, so we practiced a lot yeah. against each other too. So now, were you guys mainly recruited through high school, AAU ball, travel ball, like? Um, for me personally. The the offer for the out of state school and like the interest for the out of state schools all came from playing AAU because okay. we didn't play a single AAU game in New Mexico. In New Mexico, yeah, all of our games would be in Arizona, California, Texas. Um, Nevada, yeah, Texas. Uh, we went to Atlanta. Um, like we we were all over, so that's kind of like where a lot of the where my exposure was gained was in the summertime. And, you know, thankfully we had something like that. We were playing on the uh, Adidas gauntlet. Like we had an opportunity to play in front of these coaches. And, you know, we got something that we don't – I mean, we only got three months to, to make really something happen. Something, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, make some shake. So, so yeah, I mean – and then – but Dominguez saw me play at the state championship in the pit uh, my junior year, and that's how they found out about me. So it was kind of a mixture of both. mixture of both yeah. for you there. What about yeah. you? Exact same thing. I mean, I had the out-of-state through D1 Nation and – all the end states through pretty much only state games. Like that's really the only time coaches show up is during state games. Yeah. Yeah. They don't go to your regular season games, pretty much just state games. Cause you can watch everyone in one day. Yeah. yeah. It's the most efficient way to recruit yeah. New Mexico kids. And if you're going to, especially yeah. a lot more of the times in your state games, you're, 
big so, time guys yeah. they kind of play. Yeah, you're kind of looking at thing, the best you know? players that yeah. the state has to offer. So oh, yeah, for sure. Exactly. Now let's talk the transition from for you high school to Division two. Mm-hmm. You JUCO to the Division two. Okay. What was the transition like? Whoever wants to go first. There. Yeah, I'll go first. Um, really, it was just the pace of play that changed. Um, our my system didn't really change. Uh, you know, we kind of ran the same sets all throughout AAU, high school, and uh, and college now. Um, so that, you know, that wasn't really hard to get used to, but it was definitely the pace of play. Um, the IQ as well. A lot of high school athletics is just people who are athletic at the time, you mm-hmm. know, but their IQ usually isn't there. But there's a lot more strategy to, to the college game. Um, uh, the details are so important. Um, you know, the value every possession and you know i mean people's jobs are on the line too so Mm -hmm. that's another thing you have to consider is like this is a business now like it's not just some recreational thing yeah so i mean that's how it was for me so high school to juco is kind of the same thing it's a lot of five out four out you know so it's a lot of pickup basketball type Mm -hmm. like basketball um so that wasn't a big change from high school to the juco but from JUCO to obviously Division Two, it's you know in JUCO you still get the very talented guys like you know there's still yeah. good talent out there. But in JUCO, it's pick up basketball. Yeah. Once you go to Division Two, one, you know higher up, like he says, more attention to details. Like the way it's people systematic. screens, like people are gonna hit you with screens. They're not gonna they're not gonna miss one. Like it's the little things. Like you're gonna have to take that extra step, or you get you know there's gonna be a bucket, or you're gonna get a foul, or like you know it's like the little yeah. things that matter now. Was it always basketball for you guys? Did you guys play more sports in high school? Like uh, I played soccer and baseball. I was gonna try out for the baseball team, but yeah. you know, I had a little ankle problem, so I had to take care of that. You know, I mean, he was out there, man, and this man can hit a little bit. Yeah, I was, I was a little bit of that. Yeah, you were out <laughs> there with us. Baseman, yeah, first baseman, third yeah. baseman. Yeah, I saw a little bit of that too. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, actually, one state. Uh, I played baseball all four years of high school, varsity level. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. No, nah, I, uh, I played basketball, and then I ran track for two years. That was cool. I did, like, all the jumping, and I did, like, 100, 200, 4 by one four by 2 So, like, just sprints and jumps. Quick sprints and jumps. Yeah, so that was, that, was, that was fun. So, for you guys, when you got here to the Division two level, you know, the speed of the game, was it a lot faster? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, the speed picks up for sure at Division two. It's more like the offense. Like, they just run their mm-hmm. offense with speed. It's not more the game. Like, you're not more up and down game. It's yeah. more like you're, you're guarding game. Like, you're running around all these screens. Like, it's plays every time. Like, it's the same play over and over and over. So, when you guys you guys went to UNM, you went and played against UNM at the pit um, for preseason. Mm-hmm. What, what was the difference between playing them they're and They're just playing? bigger, stronger, faster. Like, there's really nothing else you can say. Like, they're just bigger, stronger, faster. We yeah. couldn't. It was just really what it was. Oh, they were in the same stuff, and that's just we couldn't guard them. They're just bigger. Yeah, unfortunately, rest. I can't comment. Uh, I didn't get to play. I didn't get to play UNM or State the past mm, two years we played. That is true. So yeah, I played UTEP my freshman year, and that was like the first game of my regular. That was like the first game yeah. of my regular season. Yeah, and uh, so you know that was crazy. Like that was my second college game because we scrimmaged Otero, and then we played UTEP, and so played UTEP in the regular season. Yeah, well, it, it, was, it was like the expedition. It was the regular oh, season. Oh, it was like a regular game. season yeah. expedition game. Okay. So, um, but that was like considered like our first real game, and yeah, that was just really just the strength and the athleticism. Yeah, I think that's really the only difference between D one and D two. They run the same stuff. It's just I think it's just the athleticism yeah. really and the size of these dudes. Like, and I mean, I think there's IQ aspect too. For it, sure, too. for sure, there's definitely a big IQ aspect for sure. But for the most part, it's just the athleticism part. Yeah, that's what I agree. Okay, so now let's take a look at, let's get a little bit into the student part of student-athlete. What are your majors, and what do you plan to do with those majors? Uh, I'm an exercise science major. Um, I want to get a minor in psychology. Uh, so my dream job is to talk to athletes that are going through a tough time. Like, I know you see these NBA players going through, like Zions. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Kevin Love was, like, the first big one yeah. that really – really started you know people started recognizing it but like as all athletes here like we can all agree like it's tough yeah yeah it's a Especially lot with injuries. and now you got yep. school and then like now if they're getting hurt on and off like they can't like I, my roommate's been on and off injuries and like you know it's tough it's tough and you know you, someone to talk to is always nice and yeah like, 
that's my dream is to like be someone that these athletes can talk to to get motivated to get to their rehab or to get back on the court as quick as they can. Yeah. Like Zion's going through it like real tough. Like he physically he looks fine, but mentally he's just he's scared and there's like steps, like he's worried about getting yeah. hurt again. And like so obviously he's seeing people and that's like someone who I want to be is these athletes to especially these professionals to come talk to me and figure out their problems. Definitely. What about you? Uh yeah, I want uh well my major is uh business administration and I'm I'm kind of currently working on my uh masters uh through through some like dual credit program, but I'll graduate in May. Um so casual about it. Kind of working on my masters. Like <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not a big deal. It's so casual yeah, about just, it. Just, it's just, 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 just some assignments <laughs> that I got to do. Um but yeah, so you know, I graduated in May thing, and uh yeah, <laughs> spreadsheet got over here. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, so well, I, but what I want to do when I grow up is I want to be a financial advisor uh, for athletes specifically. I think that's a really cool job just to be around, you know, around the game or around a game and still like, kind of remain competitive within my career um, and still, you know, have that financial side of it without, you know, quickly deteriorating my body, mm-hmm. you know, while playing. Yeah. And still enjoy some of those uh <laughs> some of those amenities that, you know, being around the game has, especially with a close connection. Like, you know, if I can get, you know, a star player from a team, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know, it's like, hey, can I get some tickets? It's like yep. I, I know you got the money for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> can you leave it's a couple thousand. tickets when you walk out? But no, that's not why they come in the office, hey you can you leave a couple tickets on the desk? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna just go get some water real quick, you know. <laughs> but I think I think that'd be cool just helping people um or like athletes specifically with the you know large sums of money like we just saw Jalen Hurts get you know paid a whole bunch. Million. So yeah, he got like, paid a lot. Philly, Philly dropping a lot of money on that guy. Hey, man. Yeah, so I mean you can do you can do so much with that for for so long. So I, I kind of want to help athletes become like you know financially. Yeah, they're not gonna play forever, like you said earlier today. We yeah. talked about this. They're not gonna yeah. play forever. I mean the longevity of sports is yeah is forty really, years. Yeah, I mean that's a good career. Yeah, I mean even football in basketball. Might, yeah. yeah, football might be what thirty three. Yeah, making it to forty in basketball is like, yeah. oh man, he's yeah. old. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. forty is. You, you still, you still, you still got a life at least live. forty years. Hopefully, you still yeah. got a lot of life. You to still live. got. I mean, then you got guys like LeBron who, like, oh, man. you know, they just drop. You don't got to worry what, about money for. What he years. dropped the other day, uh, points wise, and he's like, what? Almost he is forty, ain't he? Yeah, mm-hmm. like thirty, what thirty five or yeah, something. Thirty five. Like he's but, forty. Yeah, but not <laughs> not every like. <laughs> there's only one LeBron James. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you no, know. No. The chances of you having that sustainability yeah, in the league. The fact that his worst ankle, like his worst injury is like a was little an ankle roll. and a yeah. groin, like yeah, yeah, a little groin pool. Like, like your chance. I mean, there's a 99% chance you're going to end up with that, you know, something. as a 35 year old with a with bad no ankle career, or something. Yeah. Something's wrong. And if you came, you know, if you didn't finish college, you got two years of college. You know, yeah. it's, it's going to be hard to find a career. You got to kind of piggyback off your off your name and likeness that you hopefully built while you were in the career. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of factors that people have to think about. And, you know, I'd like to, you know, the problem solving aspect of that is kind of what's intriguing to me. How did you guys like come up with like, this is what I want to do. Like, where did that come so from? So when, when I was going through my injury, uh, through my ACL injury, I saw a lot of people cause you know, it was a tough time because, uh, I got offered a little job, uh, at a trampoline park for like a salary uh, option. So I had that, and then, you know, I was just going to do school, you know, I start my career. And then, because I was told I wasn't playing again unless it's, like, a miracle comeback. So while I'm doing that, I'm also handling that. So I had someone to talk to. And, like, when I was talking to that person, I was like, no, nah, I want to do this job. Like, this is something I'm mm-hmm. into. Like, they're talking about everything I really want to talk about, sports and what's going on in my brain. Mm-hmm. So, like, when that started happening, I was like, no, nah, this is a cool career. Like, this is something I would pursue. Yeah. So that's where I got that idea from. What about you with the financial aspect of things? Um, for me, I've always just liked the idea of, you know, being financially secure mm-hmm. and comfortable. Um, and, you know, through that interest, I've kind of, uh, you know, just become kind of versed in the community of economics and, and you know, accounting specifically. I, I love accounting. Yeah, loves money. Yeah, uh, so I mean, who doesn't love money? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, exactly. he knows where to go get his check, and that's all he needs to know. Where do I get my check? But yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of where it came from. You know, I don't want to seem like a like somebody that's money hungry. You know what I mean? Like I have morals and values and everything. Yeah. But I mean, in order to 
in order to make this one life that we have, you know, as great as we can make it where, where we're at in the world. In the world yeah. yeah. Like, you know, this is what I'm gonna have to do. So you definitely got to have money to do that too. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. That yeah, makes I'm not sense. trying to struggle. I hate the struggle. So, yeah, I mean, that's where my career stemmed from or my, you know, liking of, of just money in general came from. So, yeah. Let's, let's talk a little bit more. Let's go in back into the sports aspect of things. You know, these guys that you guys have played with, a lot of New Mexico guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, over a half of, our team, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, over half for sure. For sure. A lot we could of, probably bring in about five, six new dudes from out yeah. of state and probably about 10 Mexico dudes every year, probably around there. So, you know, you went to Illinois. Mm-hmm. You know, what was the recruiting like there? What were, what were some of the guys that you played with? So I played with a lot of dudes from Michigan, you know, Chicago, obviously, mm-hmm. some Milwaukee Cats. And then Wisconsin, there was all my white dudes are from Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> and then so uh, those were the four. And some Indiana. Indiana was definitely mm-hmm. in there. Uh, so, you know, a group of people around, you know, a little area. But they were all mostly from smaller towns. So, mm-hmm. like, they're lower class, you know, 1A, 2A out there is, you know, 1A, 2, you know, little schools. So, with the little schools, you know, the players were – about the same height as high schools. Like yeah. I said earlier, it's like it's just a it's just better talented high school players. It's like a glorified high school. Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. So that's all it is with JUCO. You're just a little bit more talented than mm-hmm. you're. You're the best player on every high school team, pretty yeah. much. And or second, you know, whatever. So it's just better high school hoops. Like that was the only difference. Gotcha. So with you guys having local guys a lot of local guys you guys either played against these guys or played with these guys do you feel that helps like not only chemistry wise but play wise i I believe so um just seeing how somebody's played and even how they've developed their game over the years like guarding them you can see how they developed yeah and then you get to see their work ethic as well Um, I i think a lot of that stuff you know ties in um as far as personality though i didn't really know him you know too well personality wise Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that just comes with being on a team with somebody like you're being, I mean, for being around someone um, yeah. more, you know, you have to, you kind of have to like them, you know, for hating someone is two thirds of your week, yeah. you know, you're with, uh, you know, these people that are around you, you're traveling with them, you know, 18 hour bus drives, yeah, like, you're practicing with them every day, you complain it so complain for sure. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, you know, when, you know, when you build a bond like that, like, you know, the personality stuff's going to, going to come to play, but. As far as like being on the court, I think it I think it helps definitely. Just sure. just getting to know who you're playing with and and their tendencies, I think that's the most important part. Is like when something like as basketball is a game of reaction, it's mm-hmm. like, so you know you kind of have to know how they're going to react so you can react accordingly. Mm-hmm. Correct. Do the practices with the guys that played against each other in high school practices get pretty heated at times? Not really. Mm. Uh, our practices don't really get. I mean, they they the do biggest, sometimes. Yeah, the trash trash does talk. a pretty good job of making sure we don't get. Yeah, too much. yeah. Like, we'll, we'll talk trash for no, sure. Trash yeah, talk, yeah. Game, but yeah. like, but it doesn't ever get like to where people are. You maybe know, like the, each other's face. I would say like the first maybe week or two of pickup. You know, when everyone's kind of like getting to know each other, it gets a little chippy. But besides yeah. that, after the second week, we pretty much you know you know each other. You know you, we're we're boys at that point. It's part of the team. Like. We don't this have, is really yeah, what we yeah. got. Like you can get another truth. You're either gonna like me, you're gonna hate me. So yeah, there's no, there's no middle ground. I'm not right. leaving. You're not leaving. So yeah, we're here in, and we're in it for the long. Might as well time. enjoy. We both it. got the same goals. You might as well yeah. just put your you know problems to the side and yeah, put your yeah. pride. And we work on the same thing. Yeah. Check the ego at the door. Type yeah, of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's easier said than done as well. That is, yeah, I yeah. contest to that. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> for sure. Now, let's you know, let's talk your play. You know, so there, there was a player that you guys modeled your game after. Who was that? And who do you like to watch, too? Mm, I liked KD and Trace McGrady. So I'm a big OKC guy yeah. like, because of Kevin Durant. So I watched a lot of his games. Durant, Westbrook, and my uncle, my, my uncle, like, uh, introduced me to basketball. So he's, mm-hmm. like, kind of the guy that taught me basketball. So he uh, watched a, a lot of Trace McGrady. So like I like yeah. I watch a lot of Trace McGrady. He has a lot of mid range shooting, you know, pull ups. I kind of like that, you know. I like shooting a little bit. So those are two dudes I uh, model my game around a little bit. Yeah. What about you, Jalen? Um, somebody that I enjoy watching 
uh, currently and like kind of in the past is Kevin Durant. Um, you know, I got I of course like watch LeBron play. Yeah. Um, and and Derrick Rose too. Derrick Rose is really fun to watch. Uh, really cool. I remember like being on the trampoline trying to do like Derrick Rose dunks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But as far as like who who I model my game after, um, I don't know. I don't really model my game after anybody, but I do admire like. You know, I gotta say it, Jalen Brown. Yeah, I was gonna say I admire yeah. Jalen Brown's you game. Say it. Everyone says it. Um, yeah, I definitely see the Jalen Brown. Everyone game, says it. So. Yeah, we'll go with that. The Jalen Brown comparison with how do I want to? I gotta think about how I want to word this. So w- let's look at the Armac specifically. The worst trip for you guys. We talked <laughs> about with South Dakota. It has to be. I don't know. Westminster might, Westminster might be up there, too. Westminster was – but I feel like we did stuff in Westminster. At least Dominguez let us get down and walk that around. Help, yeah. Because <laughs> we didn't be locking us up in the hotel. <laughs> Last year, we went to uh, Mount Rushmore. Oh, okay. In Black Hills. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that was why. cool. That was a cool it was trip. cold. It was. It was, it was like 3 a.m. too, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, like, I was on the, I was on the brace. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, it was treacherous for sure. But – uh. That was a cool trip, but like this year we didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. Black Hills was bad this year because it was a snow storm, right? So we yeah, it was a bad. We got we got stopped an hour out of the spearfish, right? Mm-hmm. So we didn't have shoot around that uh, the, that, that early morning. Either. They like shut the highways into into South spearfish, yeah. yeah. So you couldn't get into into South Dakota. So we didn't even know who's yeah. gonna play. Yeah, we're about to take fourteen hours back to Ivan Hoop. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> to make terrible. that trip again to make it up. At some point, yeah, but no, that's by far the worst trip for sure. Every time out of conference, what has been the worst trip that you guys have had? I haven't experienced out of conference yet because I oh did, yeah we did the UNM uh first year here and then we yeah. hosted it the next year. So yeah, I forget that. Um, part. The trip to UTEP was was all right. I don't know. I don't know if it was just a bad day for UTEP, but it's a little funky out there when I went. Um, <laughs> so I guess I can I can qualify <laughs> as a bad trip. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was out there. You tell. The state trash there. Oh my gosh! For you guys, who is like? Is there a player that you've played in college that, like, like who is the toughest player you guys have played against in college? It's kind of tough than that. Yeah. Toughest player we played in college. Yeah. The uh, Shannon dude might be the toughest dude I've ever like had to guard. Yeah, it yeah. might be the toughest dude I've ever had to guard. Yeah, I will probably have to agree for now. I can't think of like, I mean, I've been fried, but like it wasn't like. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah, he like, fried every time he got the switch, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> I like, I knew he was gonna blow by yeah, me. He yeah. knew he was done for. It was chance. Over. Yeah. <laughs> chance. So let's look, you know, back into the armac of travel. Where is your favorite place to play? I'd have to say UCCS is definitely up there. <laughs> UCCS for sure. That UCCS this game. UCCS and Metro for this sure. This game too. this Every year, Met- UCCS. People don't know. UCCS just always has problems. Dude, like my freshman year, I got uh, there's this referee. You know, I, we just weren't on the same page as far as what we were, what we, you know, how we would officiate the game. Um, <laughs> so I picked up a tech and then got another one. So I got ejected. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm sitting in the locker room, like watching like the live stream. <laughs> it was no game. service because there's no yeah, service. No service in that tiny little locker room. <laughs> that locker room is as big as an airport terminal. Oh my god! And, oh and my god. Uh, so like we're, I'm just sitting there watching the game, and then all of a sudden I hear like, because mine's lagging a little bit because the you know the yep. internet's terrible, and then I hear Dominguez and like two other of our players at the time like <laughs> coming into the locker room too. You're like, yeah, we just got ejected also. Like, the others. <laughs> oh, my so, Lord. So, that happened. And then, you know, last year we had the whole overtime thing, you know, yeah. coming back from 20. So, these you guys are. That game? Huh? You got me a little dunk that game. Yeah. yeah. These yeah. guys are down 20 playing Springs. And I look at it they and I go. 10 Tracys? <laughs> yeah. Tracys. Nah, yeah. Do you remember that one too? Mm. But you know what's crazy is the next day we had a game against Regis. <laughs> we were down to the <laughs> again. <laughs> and came back and lost on a buzzer beater over there. Oh that my that God. game was insane too because it was I like tired. I actually, <laughs> I actually watched that game. The UCCS game. I was. I don't know what it was. I was just like, gosh, guys. Yeah, I can tell you what it was. It was <laughs> <laughs> you can that joint. sprayed out. I can't tell you what it was. <laughs> And then I you, guys, what it was. you guys are down 20 and I turn the game back on to my phone and all of a sudden y'all are tied. I'm like, what just, what just happened? 
So then you guys are playing Regis. And they're down 20 at half. And I look at my roommate and I go, they're going to win this game. I thought we was going to win time, time, man. At halftime, I think we all thought we was going to win at halftime. Yeah, for sure. Like, I don't, I don't think, I think we were the most confident team to ever be down by 20. <laughs> <laughs> the night before, like, oh, no, we're used to this. We thought for sure he's going to come back and win. <laughs> so we're yeah. about to go into our press and you guys can't handle yeah, it. Like, we, we knew that to pressure if we knew that. That, that is one thing I did notice. A lot of times when you guys played press against teams, they just, it was like, Everything just shut down for him. Well, that's the style. My freshman year, that's all we did. We we pressed every we tried. We tried every year, though. At the beginning of every year, we tried. Well, I mean, it worked. My, we did it the whole year, my freshman year. But the last, last year, years. when I tore my ACL, uh, it just we just didn't have the guys yeah. for it. I think we just didn't have the athletes for it. And, and then guys, this year is kind of the same thing. You guys obviously have to practice that. So then, do you oh, think practicing against your own press is like yeah. well, that's why you don't press a press pressing you? team. Like, I mean, you don't press the press. Yeah, because, because we're used to it. Yeah. So it just is. I mean, we break it instantly. Yeah, I noticed. Open shots. I noticed that when, like, you guys would press a team, they would, like, it looked like they just malfunctioned. It's because they can't. One, they can't do what we do in practice. Like, we we do this every day. Like, mm-hmm. they can't simulate how our press is going to be. If you yeah. don't have those guys. You yeah, can't, exactly. Can't or they see. don't understand the rules or when we're doing it or, like. You know, they don't understand when, like, how to simulate it in practice. If you guys would score, I'd announce the name of the guy that scored. And then I'd turn around, and I'd all of a sudden, somebody else was scoring again. I'm like, ha, what? Yeah. I looked down for two seconds. Like, what is going on? And I think another th- another reason why teams get so flustered sometimes is because they're so used to systematic basketball. So they're used yeah, to, they you know, court. okay, you know, let me get the ball. Let me see what, you know, let me see what we're set up in. Let me make sure everybody's in the right spots. Okay, let's get into it. And it's hard to do that when you got up. people flying at you. got two guys coming at you, and. We're you got to pass hacking you because they ain't calling it. Yeah, no, we're going to foul for sure. We're going to make sure we <laughs> <laughs> make sure we get away with any foul we can. But, uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes I think I think with the people that we signed uh, this past weekend, yeah. I think we have a couple more pieces to be able to yeah, run. For sure. Show. You guys signed sure. quite a bit. You said three? Three Otero, three Otero guys. guys. Three Otero yeah. guys. And, you know, you can attest to Juco basketball. I grew up around – Juco baseball, and I had some buddies Otero's that, yeah. well-known, for sure. They're, they they you, make good hoopers. Yeah, they make good athletes. I think yeah, Juco. For sure. You know, a lot of people look at Juco, and yes, it is glorified high school sports, but there are some dudes that come out of Juco's. I mean, there are some dudes at all yeah. levels. I mean, Albuquerque's not the only place that doesn't get exposure, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's, yeah. there's places all over America and even around the world that don't yeah. get exposure, and that's their only opportunity. They, Juco's, they go yeah. and they make the most of it. I mean, show. I had to go to Salt Lake City to even Salt Lake get City's recruited, actually pretty beautiful. You know? Yeah, so. yeah. We, I've been to Salt Lake City for my – or I went to Salt Lake City for my first time this past season. Yeah, that's I mean, something we did in Utah. It's a good-looking little city. Yeah, yeah I, I spent a lot of time out in Salt Lake City. I'm going to be – Two hours north of Salt Lake City this summer playing. Okay. You know, okay. taking the redshirt year, I, you know, I'm going to go play. And, yeah. Don't blame you know, me. <laughs> I got to go play. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, well, we're getting close to the end of this here. So let's, you know, do a little rapid fire. Little, I added some questions. Okay. So let's, you know, you guys have done the rapid fire before on the channel and earlier, which we'll <laughs> explain that whole thing another time. So let's just go ahead. Let's start pretty simple. Gatorade, Powerade. Gatorade. Oh, I just had the Powerade and the calf, the blue one. Oh, blue one's always gonna go crazy, crazy. Kind of crazy. <laughs> but the Gatorade got the more more yeah. variety. Like if you go that uh, what's that greenish looking one? The uh, apple. Oh yeah, one. whatever that one is. Yeah. That little greenish blue looking yeah. one. That one was yeah. so so dumb. See, Powerade don't got one of those. Powerade yeah. does not have. They a got the blue. Like they that. got the blue Powerade. And they got the OGs, but Gatorade yeah. got the Gatorade got flavors for yeah. sure. Definitely. So, let's go this question. Go to Chipotle order. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break the whole order down. <laughs> the for whole, you. the whole order. So I'm going, going white rice, mm-hmm. no beans. You can hold on to all of those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking, <laughs> I'm taking uh, the steak. Eight times out of ten, I'm taking a steak. The other two, I'm going Guajillo. Uh, I think it was a Guajillo chicken. Yes, yeah, and then, like uh, and then I'm, I might go a little mild. You know, a little mild sauce, a little tomato joints on there. I don't even like tomatoes. I don't know why we put them on there. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll go to little corn things. Um, and then I'll go, you know, sour cream. Oh, got to put that queso, queso on there. Yeah, Can't forget, yeah, forget about forget that. Queso. Don't forget the queso. Can't put that queso on there. Throw a little extra on there if you're feeling generous. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not going to ask. Please, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I'm not going to ask because they charge you. I'm not going to say <laughs> they do be, you for it. But if they you, do be charging you for that yeah, extra yeah, queso, yeah, sometimes, man. Sometimes go ahead. But um, you kind of looking right. Yeah. <laughs> Catch me on the right date. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you're gonna miss. But uh, 
And then, yeah, I'm just going to go sour cream, cheese, guac, and lettuce. And then you got to get the chips on the side every time. And then I'm going to say it again. You got to get the uh, <laughs> got to get the little hibiscus tea, whatever they got. These? Out of the three that's sitting there, it's like an orange one, a yellow I looking one, and like a dark purple yeah. looking one. Got to get the dark purple looking one. I try dark these. I got to try these. Yeah. Uh, I get a bowl. I get the white rice, beans, pinto beans. Wow. Uh, <laughs> 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 I get a uh, steak and chicken double, double meat. Mm. Big ball. <laughs> And then I get the queso and some guacamole and some cheese and then the chips and queso. It says we talking food. Can I can I just mention that uh, well, he put me on, but sushi freak and Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> That's some of the best teriyaki bowls. Okay. Yeah, I'm telling you, you got to try for a good price too. Like really, really running you five bucks for a really good meal. The most bang for your buck. A good you know protein packed meal with, with a bunch of flavors. Yeah. So. And it's all about that protein and athletics, folks. Y'all yeah, know so that. We, if Sushi Freak is watching and wants to, you know, give me the sponsor, yeah, 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 I'll be, I'll be, I'll be a Sushi Freak ambassador. <laughs> there you go, Sushi Freak. Hit these guys up. Try right. Get all Please. of them. So, um, right, right next to the mall, I can't miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Canes or uh, Chick Fil A? I ain't gonna lie, I'm probably gonna go Canes, just because Chick Fil A. I kind of ran Chick Fil A to the ground, and I'll still go. Like, I think I like Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A over Canes. Canes. That one, I, I understand that one. Rank these three. Burger King, McDonald's, Wendy's. McDonald's. Burger King last for sure. Wendy's second. I'm not going to lie. I thought about it a little bit. I had one of the Whopper joints. See, I had one of the Whopper joints, and I had a bad one. Oh. See, I've had a very sloppy made sandwich. I'm not going to say how many times I've been to Burger King, but I've had I've, I've had some, some good Whoppers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I think I'm going to change my order. I think I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go McDonald's. Nah, I still don't say the same. McDonald's made these burger cakes. <laughs> you can't, bro. There you go. There you yeah, go. It's impossible. No matter how much you want to put that Whopper up there. Yeah, the <laughs> Whopper, Whopper, <laughs> Whopper. <laughs> that commercial. Oh, no. Um, Best commercial out. Yeah. Subway or Jimmy John's? I like Jimmy John's, personally. Yeah. I, I think their sandwiches are just made better. Jimmy like, John's joints okay. be a little dry for me. Maybe it's a sandwich. I be getting that Jimmy Cubano, whatever it's called. Oh, uh, okay. uh, But, um. Subway got the Miss Vicky's chips. That's important. Okay, yeah, mm. that's huge. Jimmy John's got the whatever. They, they try to copy it. Yeah, the, the barbecue. Yeah, I get the barbecue one from that. Gotcha. One. But you got to get the, the jalapeno kettle cooked chips. That's a top tier chip is, right there. That is. I, that's that's the only jalapeno chip. chip I'd be eating most of the time. I don't I get like spicy stuff I'm, like that. Yeah. Yeah, place I get barbecue, yeah, I got you. The barbecue kettle cook goes crazy, too. So, you know, earlier we were talking eras. And I asked you, Braun, Kobe, and Jordan. We're going to make this a little different. KD, mm. Braun, Kobe. Rank them. Mm. That's tough. I think I'm going to go off the top of my head. Like, like my first reaction was to say Braun, Kobe, KD. Yeah. But um, I think if KD gets a ring this year, he might sneak. He's a heavy. I mean, like. He might sneak. He might sneak in front of Kobe because Kobe just got him in rings, you know. Yeah. You know, and he hasn't proved without Curry he can win a ring. Okay. He a proved it out Shaq. He proved it out Shaq that he won a ring. Yeah. So, so but with KD, you know, he's got CP3. He's got eight. CP3's not a CP3 winner. CP3 has no rings. Yeah. That's true. Devin That's Booker, true. not a winner. Devin Aiden, Booker, not a winner. Aiden, not a winner. Okay, okay. I can not give you that one. Not I can give you that one. That one makes sense. Good argument. I didn't even know that's a great argument. That, that's a good point. I didn't even think of that. I was not thinking winners. superstar power, but yeah, I like not it. Not winners. You can have all the talent in the world, but if you're not winners, you're not winners. That's why Golden State got four. They know what it takes to win. Yeah, they do. Hey, Curry was not That's afraid. Curry. When they needed a bucket, it was not through Curry. It was through KD. Is Devin Booker willing to do that? Yeah. You got to sacrifice for the team. KD is your best bucket getter on that team. Definitely. Yeah. Easily. I think that's one thing that I think a lot of people, they they don't really realize. You know, 2016, Braun and Cleveland beat golden state yeah but there was no kd kd was hurt yeah and i don't think a lot of people realize that when it comes to looking at that 2016 finals year wow i mean yeah you had the big block by braun on iguodala but that yeah. goes down as the most clutch uh probably most clutch defensive play of all time easily definitely yeah. so now let's look at the big three era thought of this earlier <laughs> Uh, Which the... big three 
would you take? You're talking about the Harden, KD, OKC, you know, yep. team. You got the Heat, Miami, Bosch, the Wade, and then you got the Celtics. Boston. Yep, you got the, the Celtics team. starting to form. So on Boston, you had KG, Pierce, Rajon Rondo. Okay, yep. and then OKC, you had obviously Harden, KD, uh, and uh, Westbrook. Westbrook. And then in Miami, you had Brown, Bosch, and Wade. Yeah. Yep. I'm taking it Brown, Bosch, and Wade every, every time. time. It was just such yeah. good hoops. Okay, now Ray Allen on Boston. Those three with no Ray Ooh. Allen. True. I'm taking. What, what are you putting Ray Allen? Are we just? Are we just a new question? Who, yeah. Which is better, Boston Ray Allen or? Yeah. Which Which yeah. team is better? With, which team is better with, with Ray, Ray Allen? Allen. Um, last I recall, uh, Boston don't really mess with uh, Ray Allen like that. Right? Yeah. I, and I was gonna say, without Ray Allen. You don't have the rebound by Allen no. or rebound yeah. by Bosch. Kick, kick out, out to Allen and uh, yeah. the three. I don't think Braun is – I think Ray Allen, whatever team Ray Allen's on that year is winning that ring. That's a good yeah. point. That's I mean, Two that's great a, points, man. Yeah. It's a great team. All right, well, that's it for Hammer Time today. Guys, you guys want to – anything you want to say before we log off of here? One more year. That's all I got to say, man. Hey, one more year. All I got to say is go Cowboys. <laughs> go Cowboys. Hey, y'all, make sure – And Cowgirls, too. Right? And Cowgirls. And Cowgirls. And Cowgirls. Cowwomen. Hey, make sure you guys check these guys out. Follow them as much as you can. Their social medias should be on – some sort of oh, picture. You can find them for sure. You yeah. can definitely find them. They're easy access. Don't don't stalk them though. That's weird. Okay, don't be. No joke, private anyways. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see y'all later. Peace.